Well, as you may already know, my name is Joe Martin, and today I want to tell you a little bit more how to use a program called Karma, as well as how to install it on your machine and configure it for the way that you would like. So Karma is what's called a continuous response measure software. Basically what that allows is for you to get real-time feedback from what we might technically call a stimulus material, but basically when we, what we mean when we say that is a video. So if you're an instructor, whether or not you've considered this before, you're constantly getting feedback from your students. Often that comes at the end of the semester uh, per university guidelines, sometimes via the middle of the semester you may solicit feedback through some kind of informal process. But that's not actually the feedback I'm talking about. The feedback that I'm referring to is the feedback that you get every day in your classes. As you're explaining a topic and you look out into the class and you see students that look confused or inattentive, you modify what you're doing in light of those responses. You're getting real-time feedback in the moment in that transactional model of communication. But as many of us have been asked to teach online, we're finding that we lose a lot of that feedback. And Karma is a software that can help you to regain some of that. It's also a very powerful research tool. If you're a researcher and you would like to either get away from or supplement standard methods of qualitative or quantitative research, continuous response measures are a great way to do that. Where instead of just doing a pretest, a stimulus, and a post test, you can actually get student or participants' reactions to materials in real time. So I want to show you how to use this software that, like I said, can benefit your teaching uh, or your research. In teaching, to give a little bit more specificity about that, as many of us who have taught online before realize that we often put out videos for our students to watch, uh, but we don't really know how those videos are being perceived. With software like Karma, you could potentially pilot test your videos or bring in one student from your class to your office, have them watch the video, have them indicate their responses in real time, uh, or even multiple students. Or another scenario, <clears throat> before we get into actually installing this program, imagine, as I've done before, you're teaching one online class and one face-to-face -face class. Uh, present to your face-to-face -face class the video you plan to present to your online class, but bring in laptops, as we have here at the University of Kentucky, into your classroom, have students watch that video online with headphones, and have them indicate uh, how they are following along. You could have some of them indicating whether or not uh, they find it interesting, some of them indicating whether or not they find it humorous. We know the benefits of humor and in instruction. Some of them indicating whether or not um, they find it confusing. And you can take all those results and look at some weak spots in your materials that you're sending to your online classes to better your instruction. So without further ado, I'm going to get into how you actually install this software. So we're at the web page for it now, but I've prepared a detailed a list here going through everything that you need to do in order to get this software on your computer. <clears throat> and when I say computer, unfortunately I am talking about PC. So I'm on a Mac right now. I was able to run this very smoothly uh, through a program called Parallels. <clears throat> you may also be able to accomplish the same thing through Boot Camp. And I have links to those here. So the first thing you need to do is go to karma.jmgerard.com and click Download Karma. So that's the personal website of the creator, and this is a free and open source software. I actually stumbled across this software uh, when someone on, I was searching online and someone had asked a question uh, looking for a software like this, and uh, J.M. Gerard said, I couldn't find one, and so I made one myself, and uh, I was delighted to ha have found that out. So when you click Download Karma, you're gonna go to a different website where you actually do get the download file. And this is just, again, one of the many ways this installation can be tricky, but I promise that the program itself is anything but. Um, so then you'll cl click Download Karma. You'll get this zip file. When you open the zip file, you're going to want to extract everything. Sometimes you can get by without doing that on other programs. Uh, for this one, you're going to want to hit Extract All. Select the destination on your computer to which you would like to extract the file. And then, uh, once it's extracted, you can open that up, or your computer may open it for you, and that's when you're going to hit Installer Web. This is the actual executable file that's going to open up the program and begin the installation. So you're going to hit a lot of Next prompts here. So first, you'll hit Next here. Uh, it's going to prompt you if you want to add a shortcut to your desktop. I would suggest doing so, especially if you'd like for your participants to be able to more easily find and access the program. Uh, then you're going to have to hit next to download this MATLAB software. 
This is just a component of the software uh, that's necessary in order for it to run. So once you download, you click Next. That download can take a while. Make sure you're not on a mobile hotspot or anything for that download. Is it several hundred megabytes? Um, then once that's finished, you can click Install, and you should get a prompt that the installation has completed successfully. So click Finish there. But you've got a little bit more work to do. So uh, as I note here, um, Karma tries to be helpful in getting you everything that you need uh, to run this software. But unfortunately, uh, if you click the link through the Karma program, after you try to run it, it'll say you don't have VLC installed. If you would, it says, would you like to go to the download page? If you do, it's going to take you to the wrong download page. So what you need to do instead is follow the link that I have provided for you here. And what this is, is at the time of this video and the preparation of this document, this is the latest version of VLC for 64-bit systems. And that's really, really key here. I tried repeatedly uh, before I realized this, running a 32-bit VLC application, and that did not work. So once you get there, you're going to get this scary looking uh, list of various file formats. But this is the one that you want. I've got it highlighted and an arrow next to it. It's VLC-2.2.6-win64.exe. Basically, that just means this is a 64-bit executable file, which is exactly what you want. So you download that. It's not a huge file. You're going to do the same things. You'll open it depending on your web browser. This screen may look a little bit different. But you'll click that file to open it. You'll click yes to allow it to make changes. I promise it's not a scary program. Uh, select your desired language, in my case English, and click OK. And then you're going to walk through the steps to actually set up and install VLC. Now there's one important thing that you don't want to miss here, so please don't click too quickly through these boxes. So click next, agree to the license, make sure you read the entire license agreement, uh, and click next. And this part is really key. So whatever else you click up here is doesn't matter as much, but you do need to ensure that you click the ActiveX plugin box. This should be selected as it is on my screen here before clicking Next. Select your, your program installation location, in my case, a normal C drive, hit Install. Uh, you don't need to run the VLC media player, so if you don't want to have to worry about closing that out, you can unclick that and click Finish. Now, you've got Karma installed, you've got the MATLAB accessory installed, and you've got the proper version of VLC on your machine, so you're actually ready to run this program. Woo! So you're going to click Finish there, as I mentioned, and go to the desktop, and there you'll see the Karma icon. So you'll double click that and you're presented with two options, whether you want to collect ratings or review ratings. And what that's basically saying is, do you want to collect continuous response, right? So it's people indicating, again, their affect for a certain stimulus material, how much they like or dislike a video, for instance. Or if you want to review previously collected ratings. Since this is the first time you've installed this on your computer, you definitely want to click collect first. So you click, click collect and there you are presented with the beautiful Karma window. This is again the stimulus presentation window. So in other words, all this will show as a video file. And it will also indicate the level of, for instance, in this case, affect on the right hand side. So if you look over here, we have positive affect and negative affect. So um, it has here negative 100 to positive 100. You can easily manipulate this from a computer just by clicking down on this little bar and then sliding your mouse up and down as you watch the stimulus materials. And you can watch this again uh, in real time as the, as the participants watching the material so they know exactly what they are indicating. But they don't have anything to watch yet, so that's what we need to set up next. So you want to click Media and then Open Media File. So again, Media is sitting up here at the top. Click Media and then Open Media File. From there, I just selected an MP4 file that I had. In this case, it's uh, something that I use from in my classes on, when I discuss inoculation theory. Uh, and it's a video from A Few Good Men where Kevin Bacon really pulls the rug out from under Tom Cruise. Um, so I click uh, this file once that's selected and then hit open. And now, perfectly, this file is going to display in the window. So in other words, this is now ready for um, participants to view and indicate you know, their, in this case, affect for. But we want to change those labels. I feel like for students, if I'm trying to use this in my classes and I want it to be uh, something that's just uh, easily to, easy to understand and I don't want it to confuse them, I don't like positive affect and negative affect. That sounds very stuffy to me. So uh, to make it a little bit more fun and straightforward, I'm going to go to settings. So again, that's up here, the second uh, menu. Click settings and then hit set access labels and we can actually modify these. So I'm going to change instead of positive affect, I'm going to change it to love it. And then instead of 
negative affect on the lower axis. I'm going to change that to hate it and then click OK. Also, don't feel like this blue and yellow, nothing about yellow says love it to me and nothing about blue says hate it to me. Um, so in, I want to change the color map of that to better reflect what it is I'm trying to ask students or participants um, to indicate. So I'm going to click settings and then set axis color map. And this is part's a little bit annoying if you're trying to pick out the perfect color scheme. One, you're a little bit limited, so you've only got uh, a handful of options. And two, you have to click them and hit submit in order to see what they look like. In my case, I'm going with bone. Uh, it sounds kind of scary, but basically it is just uh, kind of a monochromatic scheme. So black says hate it to me, white says love it to me. I think that works for my purposes. So also, and the, one last thing that I want to change, maybe before running this, I've got my stimulus material ready. I've got my color map how I want it. I've got my uh, axis labels how I want them. Uh, but the next thing I want to do um, is potentially, in this case, I'm not going to walk through these, but I can change things like axis numbers. So if I'd rather it be a negative 10 to positive 10 scale, you can change that. You can also change the sampling rate. So in other words, how frequently you want the, the uh, software to be uh, pinging where the user has placed their meter. So for instance, if I told it to only measure every five seconds, if I loved this part and then two seconds later I hated it, it's only going to pick up that hate it measurement. Uh, but if we tell it to do it every five se one second or multiple times a second, um, that's going to make sure that we get a nice variety of where that slider actually is. Once your participants are familiar, your students are familiar with how to use this, so I note here that you can use a mouse or a joystick. I think it's really neat that this program can be configured to use the joysticks um, because they've returned to that neutral state. Uh, they're very intuitive and quick to use, so students can really easily indicate whether or not they, they love something or they hate something. But the mouse works as well, and of course they can see where their mouse is pointed. But once you're ready, you just hit begin. A countdown will will briefly say start saying one, two, three, um, or three, two, one. And then the stimulus material will start playing. So you note the slider goes across here, the file name is here, uh, and you can pause the rating at any time here. So the participant now, once it begins, can move the slider in response to the stimulus material. As you can see, I've moved it up in this instance. He's walking into the courtroom. I, I, think, I think this is interesting. I love it. Um, so once, once the stimulus materials have ended, a prompt will appear, and what you want to do is create a unique file name. It's going to create a CSV file or comma-separated values. You're going to hit Save. Acknowledge the export by clicking OK, and then you're going to close the collect rating screen that the stimulus materials just played from. So at this point, once you've closed that collection screen, again, that's the screen that looks like this, you are then ready to hit the review rating screen. So review ratings is where you're actually going to be able to see what your participants indicated. So in case you aren't looking over their shoulder awkwardly the entire time, you can still play back in real time exactly how they felt about the video that they just watched. So back on that splash screen, you're going to hit review ratings. And now you're going to be presented with the review rating screen. As you'll note, it's a little bit different. In other words, it uh, doesn't just have a big media window with a, a timer and a slider. You don't, ha in fact, have any input options. You just have the option to review the data at this point. So we need to first open up some data to actually review, because right now we've just got a blank window. So we're going to hit Media, and again, that's right up here in the left-hand corner. Hit Media, and then Open Media File. And in this case, I'm going to pull up the same video that they, we just watched in the stimulus materials, because that's the one that I actually want to see where the responses line up with. So open up that same video and click Open. And now my stimulus materials will appear, or my video, right there in the left-hand column. But as you know, we don't have any responses here. A student or a participant just watched this, so how do I pull in their responses? Well, now we need to go over here to the bottom right-hand side and click Add Annotations. And what this means is it's going to actually pull up the annotations of the participant that just watched this material. So we then find our previously created CSV file, and in this case we named it A Few Good 
man, and men rather, inoculation theory. So we select that and click open. And what that's gonna do very nicely is load that stimulus material right here into the window. And so what I wanna do now is walk you through everything that's displayed on this beautiful screen here. And I'll move uh, this uh, uh, just for a moment so that I can get my video out of the way. But now the Karma Stimulus Material Review Rating screen will appear and you'll have everything on there that you need. So first, she'll note here in green, the stimulus material will be playing. And if you hit resume right here, it's gonna actually move this slider and then move the stimulus material in response to that. It's gonna track the viewer's ratings, as I mentioned, as that goes. So if you notice here in blue, viewer's ratings, uh, that's actually what the participant was indicating via that slider as they watched the video. So right here, this scene is kind of boring setup stuff. They weren't loving it. Uh, but now, as action happens in the next scene, that's going to shoot back up. Um, so that's actually, we're tracking in real time. When we hit resume rating, this plays, this moves, and we can see the affect level as the stimulus materials play. Also note that a stim and leaf plot is created, so you can get a sense of generally how they felt about your video as a whole. And note, finally, that you can add annotations again. So we've got a pretty empty box here. We've only got one response incorporated. I can load several numerous responses in here. Stim uh, box plots or stem and leaf plots will be displayed. And then those lines will be um, correlated down here. So we can see, for instance, how maybe an entire class felt about something. Maybe this student was an anomaly. Most people loved the scene. Well, we can see that the more data that we load up into this program. So this is a powerful program. It is a easy to use program, and it's one that I think offers a lot of benefits, whether you are a teacher or a researcher or both. Thanks.